Beloved, hear the word of God. Feel the spirit. Join our service every Sunday at 10 a.m. as we connect with the word of God. See you Sunday, and to God be the glory. Sisters and brothers all, in faith and in struggle, good morning. Here are your announcements for Sunday, October the 1st. Your generous contributions help support the mission of Abyssinia. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've switched our online giving platform to PushPay. You can text Abby to 77977 or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account using the number 917-710-7933. You can mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and for your generosity. Please continue to be in prayer for members of our faith community who are requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. And our praying band continues to stir up the gift of the Spirit on Sunday mornings. Join us at 8.30 a.m. on Sundays via Zoom. Details are on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And our children's choir will rehearse each Sunday morning in October from 10 to 10.50 in the church's vestry. Our Institute of Christian Education Wednesday Night Bible Study returns in October. Minister Nadelka Prescott leads the virtual sessions titled Unsilenced for God. See Join in Details on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org for more information. We invite you to join us for Let Us Pray weekly conference call. This prayer line takes place each Thursday at 7 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. Join the Abyssinian prayer line to pray for God's continued grace in our lives. See Zoom and join in details on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And our Center for Care and Advocacy operates by phone and virtual appointments only, Thursdays from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. and Friday afternoon from 1 to 4 p.m. See appointment and additional contact information on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org. Visit abyssinian.org for updates on the work of our pulpit search committee. The 71st Men's Week of Services will take place at Abyssinian October the 2nd through October the 8th. This year we observe Men's Week with the theme standing on the shoulders of our great spiritual leaders. Featured speakers of the weeknight program include sons of our spiritual leaders in a panel discussion one Night Revival with guest preacher Reverend Raymond Rashad Moore and will celebrate the 71st Annual Men's Day on Sunday, October the 8th at 10 a.m. with keynote speaker Dr. Eddie Glaude of Princeton University. Your generous contributions help support the mission of Abyssinia and to make giving easier, faster, and more secure We've switched our online giving platform to PushPay. You can text Abby to 77977 or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account using the number 917-710-7933. You can mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 
132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and for your generosity. Please continue to be in prayer for members of our faith community who are requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. Our praying band continues to stir up the gift of the Spirit on Sunday mornings. Join us at 8.30 a.m. on Sundays via Zoom. Details are on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And our children's choir will rehearse each Sunday morning in October from 10 to 10.50 in the church's vestry. Our Institute of Christian Education Wednesday Night Bible Study returns in October. Minister Nadelka Prescott leads the virtual sessions titled Unsilenced for God. See join in details on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org for more information. We invite you to join us for Let Us Pray weekly conference call. This prayer line takes place each Thursday at 7 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. Join the Abyssinian prayer line to pray for God's continued grace in our lives. See Zoom and join in details on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And our Center for Care and Advocacy operates by phone and virtual appointments only, Thursdays from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. and Friday afternoon from 1 to 4 p.m. See appointment and additional contact information on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org. Visit abyssinian.org for updates on the work of our pulpit search committee. The 71st Men's Week of Services will take place at Abyssinian October the 2nd through October the 8th. This year we observe Men's Week with the theme standing on the shoulders of our great spiritual leaders. Featured speakers of the weeknight program include sons of our spiritual leaders in a panel discussion one Night Revival with guest preacher Reverend Raymond Rashad Moore and will celebrate the 71st annual Men's Day on Sunday, October the 8th at 10 a.m. with keynote speaker Dr. Eddie Glaude of Princeton University. Your generous contributions help support the mission of Abyssinian and to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've switched our online giving platform to PushPay. You can text ABBY to 77977 or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account using the number 917-710-7933. You can mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and for your generosity. Please continue to be in prayer for members of our faith community who are requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. And our praying band continues to stir up the gift of the Spirit on Sunday mornings. Join us at 8.30 a.m. on Sundays via Zoom. Details are on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org.
And our children's choir will rehearse each Sunday morning in October from 10 to 10.50 in the church's vestry. Our Institute of Christian Education Wednesday night Bible study returns in October. Minister Nadelka Prescott leads the virtual sessions titled Unsilenced for God. See join in details on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org for more information. We invite you to join us for Let Us Pray weekly conference call. This prayer line takes place each Thursday at 7 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. Join the Abyssinian prayer line to pray for God's continued grace in our lives. See Zoom and join in details on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And our Center for Care and Advocacy operates by phone and virtual appointments only, Thursdays from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. and Friday afternoon from 1 to 4 p.m. See appointment and additional contact information on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org. Visit abyssinian.org for updates on the work of our pulpit search committee. The 71st Men's Week of Services will take place at Abyssinian October the 2nd through October the 8th. This year we observe Men's Week with the theme standing on the shoulders of our great spiritual leaders. Featured speakers of the weeknight program include sons of our spiritual leaders in a panel discussion one Night Revival with guest preacher Reverend Raymond Rashad Moore and will celebrate the 71st annual Men's Day on Sunday, October the 8th at 10 a.m. with keynote speaker Dr. Eddie Glaude of Princeton University. Your generous contributions help support the mission of Abyssinian and to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've switched our online giving platform to PushPay. You can text Abby to 77977 or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account using the number 917-710-7933. You can mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and for your generosity. Please continue to be in prayer for members of our faith community who are requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. And our praying band continues to stir up the gift of the Spirit on Sunday mornings. Join us at 8.30 a.m. on Sundays via Zoom. Details are on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And our children's choir will rehearse each Sunday morning in October from 10 to 10.50 in the church's vestry. Our Institute of Christian Education Wednesday night Bible study returns in October. Minister Nadelka Prescott leads the virtual sessions titled Unsilenced for God. See join in details on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org for more information. Sisters and brothers, all in faith and in struggle, good morning. Come on, say it again, good morning. 
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's give God thanks and praise for life and for this opportunity to be in the house of prayer. We welcome one and all to the Abyssinian Baptist Church in the city of New York. We're grateful for God's goodness and God's mercies towards us on this Sunday morning, on this beautiful Sunday morning where we've come as we have come for the last 215 years to worship God in spirit and in truth. And so now as we invoke the spirit of God through Christ in this sanctuary, we invite all now to settle in, center yourselves, allow all the distractions of life to move away and focus now on worshiping the one who gives us life and light as we pray collectively the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when he taught them to pray by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now wherever you are, online, on the sanctuary, we invite you to stand. We want you to join in with the choir and sing to the glory of God. Give him the glory, give him the praise. Woke me up this morning, started me on my way. Give him the glory, give him the praise. church say amen. amen. Say amen again, sisters and brothers. And so now, sisters and brothers all, we're going to invite you collectively and individually to go to God in prayer. More than anything else, we need prayer. 
me say that again. More than anything else, we need prayer. We need the guidance of the Holy Spirit to comfort us, to empower us, to remind us of who we are. We come praying as we do each Sunday for grieving hearts and families everywhere. We particularly pray as we do every Sunday for Mrs. Butts and the entire Butts family, that God might continue to sustain them and give them peace. Please pray for Deacon Lynn Morrison and the loss of her mother. We love Deacon Morrison and we are grateful for her witness, her service throughout the city of New York and beyond. We will share final details as more information becomes available. Please be reminded of the fact that we will have a memorial service for our brother and friend, Walter Lowe, on Saturday, October 21st. Family and friends will gather at 11 30 a.m. for a service of remember, remembrance and then a celebration of life at noon. Brother Lowe passed away earlier this summer. Please remember all of our sick and shut in. Remember the great servants who are no longer able to come to church anymore. Deacon Jesse Green, who just turned 99 years old a few weeks ago. Remember her. Remember Deacon Thelma Mason, who served with distinction. I want us all this morning, sisters and brothers, to pray for Reverend Pamela Mason. Show her some love now. She watches every Sunday. Come on, you can do a little bit better than that. Show Reverend Mason some love. For so many years, she led Christian education. She continues to serve as she can, when she can, but now she has been a caretaker for her father for some time, who's also 99 years old. She can't get here as much as she would like, but we want to continue to pray for Reverend Mason. She requests the prayers of, your church, of the church. And then pray for Sister Catherine McPherson, recovering in Virginia with surgery. She just celebrated her 80th birthday. Pre please pray for Sister Yvonne Thevino, who will have a lung transplant today. Please, please pray for her. And then pray for Brother Ron West's sister, Adrian West Cameron, who is experiencing ongoing health challenges Please pray for her. We're praying for our church. We're praying for our community and our world. We invite you now, sisters and brothers, to the altar. We're going to open the altar for prayer. We're going to ask now if you want to come and pray with us collectively as a church. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust in God's presence daily live. I surrender all. Wherever you are, if you don't want to come to the altar, if you're online, just look up. Look within. Stand, if you will, and embrace the person next to you as we're seeking to go to God in prayer. But as we do so, we're just going to sing a verse of two of I Surrender All. Let this be your prayer today. Let this be your plea.
presence. Daily live. And all over the sanctuary, sing I surrender. Let me hear everybody say I surrender all. Let's sing together. more time let's sing that chorus let's sing it collectively I surrender all everything sing it like you really mean it I surrender all all everything all my doubts all my fears all to thee Eternal God, our divine parent, here we are, your children, coming to the altar on this morning. We've got a lot of burdens. We have things that are weighing us down. We have problems and challenges all around us and within us. We have difficulties we're facing individually and collectively. We're not going to list the laundry, the laundry list of things that are going wrong. We're going to first start this prayer by simply saying what we all need to say, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you dear God. Thank you. thank you for being our friend. Thank you for being our mother. Thank you for being our nurturer. Nurturer. Thank you for being the comfort and the compassion of our journey. Thank you for sustaining us in those moments where we felt all alone and by ourselves. You were the one who told us that if we put one foot in front of the other and keep the faith, we could make it if we kept on trying. So here we are, dear God. We're coming with bereaved hearts and we're coming with confusion we're coming with doubts we're coming with complex situations all around us but we know the only thing we can do is come to you in prayer praying that you might guide us praying that you might drop all of the sin that weighs us down praying that you might give us the strength to be one body in Christ yes. that we might feel your presence that we might feel your love, that we might do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. You know what we're facing individually and collectively? But we've been here before. We've had situations in our individual lives that warrant us to work. Where is God? But we come to you that knowing that you promise to be the shade upon our right hand. You promised to prop us up when we felt like giving up. You promised that you would be with us even when things look dark. So we thank you for this, the Abyssinian Baptist Church. It's a bright light. It's an oasis in the community. We thank you for the leaders down through the years, the men, the women who have served this church, who have given their all to sustain the mission of the Abyssinian Baptist Church. Oh, dear God, we're not perfect, but we know through you, you told us that if we keep your word and if we embody your teachings, we may have challenges, we may have storms, but just like we had a storm all through last week, you reminded us that in your own way, the storm will pass over. So we thank you, dear God, for all of the persons who make up this congregation, those who are online, those who are in the sanctuary, those who have been here for 50 years, those who have been here for five days. We thank you for their commitment to serving you. We thank you for their commitment to loving one another, to being a place where we can disagree, but we can find ways to unite in yeah. unity. There is no right and no wrong. There is no left or right. There is only one body committed to doing your work, to committed to being a light, in this community, we thank you, dear God, 
for this moment. Now walk up and down the aisles of this church. Someone's sick, someone's struggling. Go online for a minute, sit in someone's kitchen, in someone's bedroom. Go in someone's car as they are listening to this service right now. Touch them as only you can. Yes, Lord. Work through them. Simply put in their spirit, deposit within them the urgency to know that with you, all things are possible. Yeah, and you promise to be with us all the days of our lives. So dear God, give us the courage to live out our faith. We just don't want to sing and feel good when we're in church, but when it's dark in our lives, can we still say the Lord is our light and our salvation? When we don't know which way to turn, can we still say, whom shall I fear? When we feel as those enemies get all around us, can we still say, you are the one that will keep us going? So dear God, we thank you because we believe in the power of prayer. Prayer not only changes us, it helps us to change our situations. So we're going to believe through prayer right now that you will work through us to be a balm to somebody else. That you will work through us to let the light of Jesus shine in the world. That you would work through us to be the love that is so desperately needed in our church and in our world. Hear this our prayer, dear God. Empower us to be your witnesses. And as we go forth in this worship experience, believing in your power, we beg of thee to allow the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts to be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Come on, say amen. amen. Say amen. Say amen again.
the Lord. Say amen. amen. Let's show our choir some love and thank them for encouraging us through song. As worshipers continue to enter, sisters and brothers, we're going to ask now that all of our guests and friends who've come and joined us this morning for worship to please stand. All of our friends and guests who are here this morning, we invite you to stand now. If you're online, please tell us where you're from. Abyssinians, please extend a warm and hearty welcome to all of our friends and guests who come today to worship with us. We thank you for joining us today. And if you are seeking a house of worship to live out the teachings of Jesus Christ, Wherever you are in the world, we invite you to join us here at Abyssinia to work, to pray, to serve, to grow, to stir up the gifts of the Spirit together. You can join us by walking down the aisle or sending us an email to abyssinian.org, member at abyssinian.org. We thank you for joining us today, and it is our prayer that you will find this worship service uplifting and encouraging. And now we invite all to stand. Let us share the peace with one another and Jesus' joy. Please stand, embrace one another.
Let the church say amen, sisters and brothers. Are you, are you glad to be in the house of worship today? This is the day the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. We have a few additional guests who have come to church today. Um, Chelsea Greer from Houston, Texas is visiting with us, a member of the Antioch Baptist Church. We're grateful for your presence today. Please send our best wishes and regards back to Pastor McLeroy. Uh, we also have a delegation, I believe, celebrating Nigeria's 63rd independence anniversary. Absolutely. Come on. We see you, Sister Boldly. We see you. We're grateful for the delegation and what this moment means to not only Nigeria, but to the entire world. To the entire world. And we're grateful that you've come to worship with us today. Today's services can be found online or on the website, the order of service, or you can scan the QR code located in the strip in the back of your pew. Last Sunday was a wonderful celebration with the ushers ministry. Uh, we celebrate all of our ushers. We thank Reverend Myrick for her meaningful sermon and powerful sermon. And there was one group that was left out by mistake, and that is the Manor Ushers, the group, the Manor Ushers. We celebrate all of our ushers, and we thank you for your service here at the Abyssinian Church. Remember, your spiritual, physical, and mental health and well-being remains our chief priority. We no longer require the mass, sisters and brothers. Just please be mindful that COVID is still alive and well, and is still spreading amongst us. Please keep bear this in mind. And now, if you were born in the month of October, all who were born in the month of October, we invite you to stand. All right, everybody, happy birthday. show some more love to all of those born in October. All of those born in our October. We have, uh, I think I've got this right, Deacon Jareel Johnson, one of our senior deacons, told me that in 10 days, right, you'll be 88 years old. So we celebrate. know it's something when you, you get to the age where you can clap for yourself, you know. <laughs> All right, brother. We thank God for you. Thank God for you. The 71st Men's Week of Services takes place next week, October the 2nd, well, starting tomorrow, the 2nd 
through October the 8th, everyone is invited to attend Men's Week of Services. Amen. The theme for this year, standing on the shoulders of great spiritual leaders. The color scheme for Sunday is navy or dark blue with red accents. Men are asked to wear a navy or blue suit and a red tie. Sisters are welcome to wear dark blue attire or accent it with red. Starting tomorrow, there is an evening of Christian education with emphasis on the sons of our spiritual leaders in a panel discussion. Panelists include Adam Clayton Powell III, Deacon Herbert Proctor, Deacon Calvin Otis Butts IV, Deacon Dr. Sean Davenport as the moderator. On Wednesday evening, October the 4th, the Reverend Rashad Raymond Moore, PhD, will return as the revivalist for one evening. And then on Sunday, sisters and brothers, next Sunday will be the 71st annual Men's Day at 10 a.m. with keynote speaker, Dr. Eddie Glaude. <laughs> Dr. Eddie Glaude is a powerful and righteous brother. You want to come and hear what he has to say to this community of faith. So we look forward to seeing everyone throughout the week and next Sunday morning. The Abyssinian Development Por Corporation in partnership with Harlem Community District 5 invites the church family and our online community to the launch of Crazel Expansion Project. You know, it was some bad weather we've had over the last couple of days. But as we said, the storm has passed over and the event was due to take place yesterday, but now it will take place today from 10 until two. That means they're out there right now. The PS 175 schoolyard between 135th on 1 135th between Adam Clayton Powell, 7th Avenue, and Malcolm X Boulevards. Go out, support our very own Deacon Dr. Sandy Johnson, chairs the Development Corporation. Sister Kyla Butts assists Dr. Johnson in this very important project. We want all to go and uh, avail yourself to this very important opportunity. Crizel stands for culturally responsive and affirming social emotional leadership. We urge everyone to walk over to PS 175 today after the service. Amen? Amen? And now we will call on Sister Valerie Grant on behalf of the Pulpit Search Committee to come with an announcement. Amen. Good morning, Abyssinian family. Um, before I begin, I would like to recognize the Pulpit Search Committee. Would all of the members of the Pulpit Search Committee please stand wherever you are? Please, congregation, give them a round of applause for their hard work. Thank you. The Pulpit Search Committee is pleased to announce that we have identified four lead candidates who will advance to the next and final phase of the assessment process. Each of these candidates presents a unique and impressive set of skills and experiences, and the decision-making process has been incredibly challenging due to the high caliber of the candidates under consideration. As you know, calling a pastor is holy work. Yes, ma'am. Where members of the congregation come together to seek the mind of God and to discern who God has prepared to be our spiritual leader. Yes. Our process of discernment has been both rigorous and highly deliberative. We selected the lead candidates based on a comprehensive assessment of their pastoral experience, vision for the future of our church, and alignment with the hopes and aspirations of the congregation. We have the benefit of two advisors who were assigned by Reverend Butts to work with us, Reverend Cheryl Dudley, Regional Executive Minister of the American Baptist Churches of Metropolitan New York, and Reverend D. Darrell Griffin, familiar to many of you, a son of Abyssinian and senior pastor of the Oakdale Covenant Church of Chicago. Most importantly, both of these individuals have extensive experience assisting congregations with leadership transitions and they have been enormously helpful in keeping us both focused and on track. 
In addition, we have consulted with other congregations who have recently undergone similar transitions and pastoral searches. I may be a bit long-winded, I apologize, Reverend Hogger, but this is important. I'd like to take a moment to remind everyone of the steps that the committee has taken to get to this point. The first phase was screening. In November of 2022, shortly after Reverend Butts' death, each member of the search committee signed a covenant affirming their commitment to the search process, to confidentiality, and most importantly, to prayer and spiritual reflection. We used a team of paralegals from one of the top law firms in New York City to professionally redact all personally identifiable information from the application materials. We then assigned each candidate a number, and all candidates were identified by number only from that point forward. We did this to maintain both confidentiality and objectivity. The committee then screened all 47 resumes and cover letters using a scoring sheet aligned with the position description. There were 11 characteristics on the scoring sheet, including their educational credentials, prior experience as a senior or associate pastor, experience in urban ministry, experience with youth and young adult ministry, and experience in managing ministerial staff, lay leaders, and administrative staff, among other considerations. All resumes and cover letters were reviewed by not one, but two members of the search committee as a check and balance, and again, to ensure rigor. Based on these scores, 12 applicants emerged as candidates. One applicant withdrew for personal reasons, and 11 candidates moved forward to the next step in the process. Phase two involved an in-depth review. In late February, the 11 candidates were asked to submit written responses to 10 questions related to their call to ministry, spiritual gifts, ability to manage conflict, relationships with lay leaders, experience with youth ministry, their views on the intersection of faith and education, important to our congregation, and importantly, their ability to lead a congregation through grief and bereavement, and their views on, excuse me, equity and inclusion. We also compiled and viewed samples of their preaching online. The next step involved congregational engagement. And what I would note is that this was not initially in our uh, process, but it's something we added because the committee felt it was important to hear directly from the congregation. So what we did is we fielded a congregational survey that garnered 593 total responses and we also convened five listening sessions, both in person and, on and online, which attracted several hundred members of our congregation. Many of you were present for one or more of those. We then retained a professional market research analyst to compile the results of the survey and the listening sessions and to highlight <clears throat> the overall themes, as well as areas where there were different, differing views based on demographics, membership status, or other factors. Some of the key findings, you may recall, I did present this earlier, but I will repeat. Community engagement and activism are important across all segments of our membership, but they may mean different things to different uh, communities. The youth audience is not monolithic, and those who are between the ages of 18 and 25 have distinct needs and a distinct voice. Men and women are largely in agreement on most, but as you would expect, not all uh, aspects of the church and the priorities. Visitors feel less strongly about most things that relative to members, and the importance of the traditional family tends to decrease with younger audiences. However, the importance of a church home and a church community is of strong importance across our entire congregation. These and other themes were essentially the basis for the questions we asked the candidates. Literally, they became the questions that we posed during the interviews. <coughs> Excuse me. The interviews began in July of 2023. We interviewed all 11 candidates with the committee in person and each candidate joining by Zoom. Can someone bring me water, please? Um, each interview was 75 minutes long, 
And Vice Chair uh, Tiffany Merriweather and I asked each candidate the same set of questions. Thank you. We also posed several follow-up questions based on input from the search committee or information that emerged from each candidate's applications. At the conclusion of the interviews, members of the, com of the committee rated each candidate, and this information was tabulated and presented for deliberation. Thank you. <laughs> I'll be all right. <laughs> we then convened in person for a three-hour meeting with one break, during which we discussed each candidate at length based on the totality of the information at our disposal. And that included the interviews, their written responses, the resumes, and the viewing of their sermons online. We then voted on each candidate individually and selected those who would advance to the next phase in the process. What I must say is that the committee itself did not know the identities of the candidates until it was time for the interviews. So that was the only, because they were going to be obviously in the room, we had to disclose that. But up until that point, all of their names and personal information had been redacted. We appreciate each and every applicant and each and every candidate who participated in the process. So what's next? I know, it's been a long process. But we are in the final phase. Our next steps are on-site visits and interviews with each lead candidate, in-depth reviews of each lead candidate's pastoral experience, comprehensive background checks and reference checks, a psychological evaluation for the final candidate. So, actually, actually we, have, we, have, we discovered that actually many denominations are incorporating this as a matter of, of course. So it was something that we learned as we went that it's actually becoming a common practice. It's not something unique to us. We will then present the candidate to the congregation and we will have a vote of the congregation on the committee's recommendation. I must say a few words about confidentiality and transparency. Again, we know this has been a long process. However, we wanted to have an opportunity to hear from you, the congregation, rather than make decisions in isolation. We value your input. We thank you for your prayers. And we assure you that we will continue this search with the level of decorum, confidentiality, and rigor that the assignment requires. We must honor the proprietary and confidential process of the search and protect the identities and the application materials of all candidates. The materials we have received and the conversations we have had with and about candidates have been and will remain confidential. We will be transparent with you, the congregation, about the steps we are taking in the search process, but we will not divulge confidential information outside of our search committee. I hope you understand. In closing, we appreciate all who hold the Abyssinian Baptist Church in prayer during this sensitive time. We are searching for a successor to Reverend Butts. Not a replacement, but a successor. This is a monumental task and we pray for God's leading as we seek to be faithful to Jesus' teachings, the communities that we serve, and those who retain hope for the uplifting and future of our church. I have to give a shout out to our new webmasters because they are putting the final touches on our webpage. When it goes live, you will see profiles of all the members of the committee. There's a section that addresses frequently asked questions. So those questions that you asked in the listening session will be posted online. If you have additional questions, if you have additional suggestions, if you have 
a nice word of prayer, you can email us at pulpitsearch at abyssinian.org, and we will either respond to you directly or post both the question and the answer online. We look forward to providing ongoing updates to the congregation as we bring this process to a successful close by the end of the year. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you, Sister Grant, for your update. And now, sisters and brothers, it's a time in our service where we all give, can participate through our giving. Amen. Giving is an act of worship, sisters and brothers. Amen. Giving is an act of worship. We give because God has been good to all of us. We give because all that we have comes from God. There are several ways in which you can give. You can text Abby, A-B-Y, to 77977. You can scan the QR code on your screen or in the back of your pew. Please be reminded of the fact that there is recur a recurring giving option. It is a, an effective way to support the ministry of Jesus Christ here at the Abyssinian Church. You give your donation, you set it, you forget it. And of course, for in-person worshipers, please be mindful of the fact that you can use the tithe and offering box in the back of the sanctuary. Following worship today, you will find the trustees in the back of the sanctuary in addition to being in the balcony to receive your tithes and offerings as well if you would like to leave them in person. Please give. Please understand that giving is a function of worship to God. In order to remain, maintain a vibrant church and doing significant work beyond the borders of these walls, please give, sisters and brothers. Please give. Now we will pray over these offerings and we invite everyone to stand and we will sing praise God from whom all blessings flow. Holy One, thank you for this opportunity where we worship you through our giving. We thank you that you have been consistently good to us. Give us courage, dear God, that we might give cheerfully and regularly as you have given to us. We thank you, dear God, for all of those who have given in the sanctuary, who will give, who are online. Bless, sustain, keep, empower by thy mighty power. This is our prayer that we offer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. Amen. 
You may be seated. Our faith and education ministry will meet immediately following the worship service today in the second floor conference room. All members of the faith and education committee, please come to the second floor conference room for a meeting after service today. If all minds are clear, deacons, we invite you now, sisters and brothers, to turn to the book of Joshua. Joshua, the first chapter and the fifth verse. This is from the New International Version. Joshua 1, verse 5. For some, this may be a familiar passage. For others, this will be an introduction. The prayer and the aim is that when reading this, you will find yourself in this text. Joshua 1, verse 5. Hear these words, sisters and brothers. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I will not leave you, nor will I forsake you. The choir will come now with our meditation, sisters and brothers. I invite you all, us all, to pray as we consider this topic, the faithful promise of God the faithful promise of God. Let the church say amen. amen.
church say amen, sisters and brothers. Let's thank our choir again with Brother LaFrederick for ministering to us through song. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. No one. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you and with you. I will not leave you, nor will I forsake you. The faithful promise of God. Let's look to God in prayer now. Holy One, thank you for this day, a beautiful Sunday morning where we've gathered in the sanctuary and online to praise you for who you are and how you function in our lives. Give us courage, whatever we are going through, to see you in this text, to see ourselves situated here alongside Joshua. Give us the courage, dear God, just for a few minutes to open our eyes and our ears, to move away from the distractions, the voices, the noises that are all around us, and center ourselves in you. Stretch us, empower us, give us everything we need to go forth throughout this week. And then once we've received something, whether it be through the songs or through the prayers or through your word explored, we will be able to lift others as we have been lifted. This is our prayer that we offer to you through Jesus Christ, amen. Our text today, sisters and brothers, is a very clear and powerful indicator of the consistency and the faithfulness of God. In the first chapter of Joshua, we discover this very powerful verse of promise and of commitment when Joshua hears directly from God. Joshua hears the voice of God at a time of critical transition in the life of the children of Israel. The interesting thing about Joshua is he had the courage to listen to the voice of God, to listen to the voice of God. In our lives, where there are a lot of voices that seek to capture our attention, and sometimes those voices take us away from our purpose or calling. Yeah. We can even allow these voices to block our ability to hear God. But no matter how many voices are around us, we must keep God's voice closest to us. Joshua, here's the voice of God when Israel is moving forward, they lost Moses, their fearless leader. And what was happening with Israel then? They were completing 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. And now the current state of Israel would mark a new beginning. The people were camped on the outsides of the promised land preparing to enter Canaan and an entire generation who refused to enter the land under Moses are now dead, with the exception of Joshua and Caleb. And now, sisters and brothers, Israel is back at the promised land, waiting to conquer it. And Joshua has just been given this mantle to carry on this great responsibility. Before God calls anyone, this is not a text for anyone in particular, this is for all of us. But for God, before God calls anyone to great responsibility and great service, God begins by giving them a vision. God reveals what may be achieved. God opens the eyes of the servants to what they have the capacity to accomplish. And it is here that God reveals to Joshua 
God's plans for the nation. This was a vision of what Israel could accomplish with and through God on their side. So when Joshua assumed this new assignment, he was given both a vision and he was given a promise. And while this declaration for Joshua moving into a new servant leadership position, while this text focuses on Joshua, I want us all to see ourselves in this text. Because this text is necessary for anyone who seeks to walk for and with God. This text is a reminder that God's promise is true, that no person is able to stand against you all the days of your life. For what does the text say? For as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you, nor will I forsake you. Prior to Joshua's ascension to leadership, when Moses was Israel's leader, Joshua was his partner, his chief of staff, his road dog, his homie, his mentee. And in this text, sisters and bro brothers, the declaration for Joshua is full of reminders, hopefulness, and possibilities. Joshua is equipped to handle any challenge that comes with the assignment because he has a clear sense of how God will be present in his life. Based on how he saw God function and operate in Moses' life. Joshua can move with intentionality and with purpose and with confidence because Joshua, who represents all of us, had a first-hand account of how God operated in Moses' life. For Joshua, it's refreshing because he saw how Moses had a positive, fruitful relationship with God. The Bible even indicates that Moses talked with God face to face. And when Moses seemed to be insufficient, inadequate, didn't have everything he needed to do the task, God gave Moses the power and the strength to endure, to press on. God said to Joshua, just like God is saying to all of you and you who are online, don't worry about it. Be easy, be cool. It's all good when you have an encounter in your personal life. When you have a dilemma in your personal life, I will work with you. When you've got some challenges in your life, you don't know how you're going to make it. When you have to go and see Pharaoh, when you're up against the empire, don't worry about it, Joshua. I'll put words in your mouth. I'll speak for you. Just tell them, Joshua, no, 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 don't get, don't get mad at me. I'm simply here representing God. Joshua, don't be overcome. Don't be overwhelmed, I hope you're listening, sisters and brothers, by your own challenges. Take a moment and reflect on what I've already done. And remember when you reflect that if I've done it before, I can do it again. And if I provided for Moses, why are you worried, brother? Have the courage to know that all of you, I will provide for you. It's funny because Joshua had the courage to listen to God. He could have succumbed to the pressures of the day. He could have thrown in the towel. But Joshua saw how God was present. He saw how God was functioning. Joshua was present at those times when, when Moses was at work and doing the work of God and they didn't know how in the world they were going to make it. When they got in some bad and ugly situations, 
when they seem, when things seem to be hopeless, hopeless, behind Moses is Pharaoh's army. Before Moses is the Red Sea. He was catching hell on both sides. But in that moment, God provides deliverance for Moses and say, look here, brother, look at what's in your hand. See what's in your hands. Reverend Powell preached a sermon on what's in your hands. See what's in your hands. Use what is in your hands and go and cross the Red Sea. Joshua, I'm going to be with you. Moses, I'm with you. And when they did that, God provided deliverance. Joshua saw what God did. Joshua saw how God operated in his big brother's life. They rambled through the wilderness. They went through all kinds of trials. They went through all kinds of storms, all kinds of hurdles. But through it all, God protected them. And so for Joshua, God is saying, don't be overwhelmed by what's happening, by you trying to take over the promised land. Little, little, I know they're all around you, just look at how I functioned in Moses' life. And because I shared with you the vision, I shared with you that vision, my vision, I'm promising that I'll do the same for you by protecting you. For all of those who are here and wondering how you're going to get through a personal situation, hopelessness, you may be wondering how you're going to survive through a circumstance. If you're not in one, you may be going through one soon. You're wondering how you're going to get through some challenge. I'm just simply reminding you today, sisters and brothers, to look at Joshua. And remember, like Joshua, that we know what we can expect from God based on what God has already done. And you know what, sisters and brothers, I've learned I've learned in my life that sometimes in our lives as people of faith, we can't always see God until we do our introspection. We can't see God when God is at work. We can't see God when it looks dark and it looks like there's chaos all around us. We cannot always see the hand of God in our lives and in our dilemmas. But after we get a little bit down the road, and we have the courage to look back through the bottle of our tears. We can say with conviction that it was nobody but the Lord. Oh yeah, I'm even talking to myself this morning. We can say con through conviction when we're going through our own hell and we don't know if we can see God around but we look back through the rear view mirror. Lord, I see it was you who loved me. Lord, I see it was you who cared for me. Lord, when I was going through hell, when I was going through bereavement, when you lost your mother, I see it was you who sat by my bedside and told me no matter what happens, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. This text is also a reminder of how God is reliable and unchanging. As the hymnist wrote, Thou changes not. Thou compassions, they fail not. As thou has been, thou forever will be in this text. God reveals to Joshua, brother, sister, friend, you can count on me. I'm going to be with you just as I was with those you looked up to. How does Joshua know where war was on the horizon for Israel? There was no way around the war. They had to go through it. They had to go through the war. God was giving the children of Israel the promised land, but they needed to conquer it. Israel already knew what to expect because they had been here before. They knew the enemies were great, but they also knew that God was with them. They knew the enemies were great, but they knew that God was with them. They knew the one that keeps Israel doesn't slumber or sleep. This text says it shines a light on the fact that we can always depend on God to be reliable. 
This text is one of my friends says down in Greensboro, Daryl Aaron at the property. He said, this, boy, brother, these, some of these texts can be mighty juicy. <laughs> Aaron likes to say they, 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 these texts can be because there's so much to unpack. This text has so much to unpack because it is not simply a declaration that I'll help you get to wherever you need to go, but it is to say I'll be with you all throughout the journey. That's a big difference, sisters and brothers. You know, some people, you know, you know, will be there when you get there. When you get there. But the promise of God is that I will do more than get you to the promised land. A lot of folk will show up once the project is complete, once the goal has been met, once you've crossed the finish line, once the meeting is over, once the deal is closed, once the agreement is signed, once dinner is served, once dinner is served, but they will not be with you when you're struggling along the journey. They won't be there when you're having difficulty, when you're catching hell on every side. They won't be there when the burden seem too hard for you to bear. But God tells Joshua here, look here, brother, straighten up and fly right. I won't just be with you when you get to the destination, but because I gave you a vision and because I gave you a promise, I will be with you all throughout the journey. In other words, I'll be with you in the morning and in the evening. I'll be when you're with you in the noonday when no one else is around. I'll be with you when you're crying a river of tears. In the midnight hour when you seem to be catching hell by yourself, I will be with you. I'll be with you. Somebody needs to hear this today, sisters and brothers. This is not, this is not your brother talking. Well, this is what God is telling us, to have the courage to look at Joshua here. The takeaway for today's message is the promise that we receive from God is God will not simply get you to a point, but God has promised to be consistent with you throughout the journey. What do you mean? That God will be with, through, with, be with us throughout all of life's changing scenes. I'll be with you. I'm available. I'm consistent. You can always count on me. It may be rocky. You may have to cry a river of tears. You may have to go through some hell. But stand tall because I am with you. Why is this important? Because for us to walk for and with God is an intimidating circumstance. And yet, we have a blessed assurance greater than all of our doubts and greater than all of our fears. That is, is God has promised to be with us through the journey. God has promised to stay with you and you and you to be your traveling partner, even though the future is unsure. None of us know what's around the corner. We don't know what mountains we'll have to climb, what tears we'll have to cry, what sorrows we'll have to bear, what rivers we'll have to cross in the days ahead, but thanks be to God that the promise given to Moses and the promise given to Joshua and the promise given to the children of Israel and the promise given to Fannie Lou Hamer, and the promise given to Dr. King, and the promise given to Dr. Butts, and the promise given to all of our ancestors is the same promise God has given to you. So our prayer today is, dear God, give us, not me alone, everybody, give us the courage to always see you in our struggles. God. Give us the courage to see you in our hardships, to see you in our pain. Thank you for reminding us that you are always present and at work in our lives. Thank you for being a consistent source of strength on the journey. And finally, sisters and brothers, this text for today shines a light on our dark path as it provides a fresh reminder that the pain of our circumstances can never outweigh the promise of God. The pain, the grief that you may be going through, you're trying to find a job, you have division in your family, 
The pain that we feel around us can never outweigh the promise of God. God tells Joshua, while there may be vast armies around you, I promise not to leave you. Disappointed? Yes. Hurt? Yes. Confused? Yes. Frustrated? Yes. At odds? Yes. You may even get mad at God without question, but God has promised not to forsake you. I've asked this question before. Many preachers have asked this question, but you've heard this question posed to you before. In our lifetime, what do you think the worst thing in the world that could happen to you? What is it? You go through multiple years of a global pandemic, you lose your job, you can't pay your bills, you seem to be getting an unsettling report from the doctor. You lose your beloved pastor after nearly 35 years of prophetic ministry. Folks may talk about you, or lie on you, or defame your name. You lose your mate after several years of marital bliss. You go through a divorce or a nasty breakup. Those are the worst things that could happen in your life. The worst thing that could happen to a person of faith is for the Lord to leave you or forsake you. But according to this text, the good news is, sisters and brothers, there's got to be some good news somewhere that the worst thing in the world won't happen. What do you mean, brother? Tell me a little something about it. The, the, the worst thing in the world you think will happen won't happen. Well, how, how do you know, brother? How do you know? I'm catching hell all around. I've got problems with my family. I can't find a job. I'm sick. I'm disgusted. I'm waiting for a new pastor. I don't know what's going on. Well, let me just tell you. Let me just tell you what the, tech, what the song said. Let me remind you what the song said. I've seen the lightning flash. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But then I heard the voice saying, black man, black woman, fight on. Press on. I'm good, brother. I don't need it. Stay cool because he promised. God promised, you better hear me, never to leave me never to leave you, no matter how dark it gets, never to leave you alone. Yeah, that's good news, that you're never alone. So as you go forth, sisters and brothers, keep that in your spirit. Don't let that go. When you go out into the world, don't, get, don't succumb by the pressures of the world. That's your assignment for today. When you go outside, rather listening to all of these competing voices all around you, be like Joshua. Listen to the promise of God. Believe the promise in good times and in bad. Believe the promise no matter how dark and difficult it might seem in your life. Remember that God is present. Remember that God is available. Allow this text to penetrate your spirit. Allow it. When you get to the point in life where the weight of the world is, is taken over, say these words, say those words. Nobody shall be able to stand against you. When you feel like the very foundation you're standing on is crumbling, say those words. Nobody will be able to stand against me. When, when, when folks talk about you and you don't know which way to go and you have nobody else, just look within and say the words. Nobody will be able to stand against When it seems hard, remember what Charles Albert Tenley said, harder yet may be the fight. Right would often yield to might. Wickedness a while may reign and Satan's cause may seem to gain, but there is a God who rules above with hand of power and a heart of love. And guess what? If you're right, I said, if you're right, I said, if you're right, God will fight your battles. God will take care of you. 
God will be your protector and you'll have peace. You'll have peace. You'll have peace. Someday, the doors of the church are open, sisters and brothers. Let's sing to the glory of God in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We have the victory in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Satan will have to flee. Come on, everybody, stand to the glory of God and let's sing. Everybody, put your hands together in the name. Everybody, in the name. We have the victory. Everybody, in the name of Jesus. sisters and brothers. Let's give God thanks and praise for another worship service. A few final announcements. Please remember to check out the church's website about programming and upcoming events. And remember to look for all other updates. We look forward to seeing you this week for Men's Week, all throughout the week. Remember, Faith and Education Meet, the Noonday Bible Study lessons will be on faith in faith and works in the month of October with walking deacon Michael Diaz. And then our Abyssinian Christian Institute will start, will not place, take place on Wednesday due to the men's revival. However, it will resume on October the 11th with Minister Nadelka Prescott. Please, yes. Please remember to give, sisters and brothers. We thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday for Men's Day. Now let us look to God in prayer. God of our weary years and of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far, now on our way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in thy path, we pray, lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we first met thee. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world that we should ever forget thee. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand. True to you, dear God, and true to our native land. And now may the power of God, the love of Christ Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth and forevermore, world without end. Amen.
your response Amen. to whatever he said. Amen. The healing of your body, Amen. the raising of the dead. Amen. No matter how you're feeling, Amen. or if your soul is real, that's all through the night. Amen. But you're caught up in the fire. Even in the Your generous contributions help support the mission of Abyssinia. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've switched our online giving platform to PushPay. You can text Abby to 77977 or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account using the number 917-710-7933. You can mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and for your generosity. Please continue to be in prayer for members of our faith community who are requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. And our praying band continues to stir up the gift of the Spirit on Sunday mornings. Join us at 8.30 a.m. on Sundays via Zoom. Details are on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And our children's choir will rehearse each Sunday morning in October from 10 to 10.50 in the church's vestry. Our Institute of Christian Education Wednesday Night Bible Study returns in October. Minister Nadelka Prescott leads the virtual sessions titled Unsilenced for God. See Join in Details on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org for more information. We invite you to join us for Let Us Pray weekly conference call. This prayer line takes place each Thursday at 7 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. Join the Abyssinian prayer line to pray for God's continued grace in our lives. See Zoom and join in details on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org.
and our Center for Care and Advocacy operates by phone and virtual appointments only, Thursdays from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., and Friday afternoon from 1 to 4 p.m. See appointment and additional contact information on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org. Visit abyssinian.org for updates on the work of our pulpit search committee. The 71st Men's Week of Services will take place at Abyssinian October the 2nd through October the 8th. This year we observed Men's Week with the theme standing on the shoulders of our great spiritual leaders. Featured speakers of the weeknight program include sons of our spiritual leaders in a panel discussion, one night revival with guest preacher Reverend Raymond Rashad Moore, and we'll celebrate the 71st annual Men's Day on Sunday, October the 8th at 10 a.m. with keynote speaker, Dr. Eddie Glaude of Princeton University. Your generous contributions help support the mission of Abyssinian. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've switched our online giving platform to PushPay. You can text Abby to 77977 or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account using the number 917-710-7933. You can mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and for your generosity. Please continue to be in prayer for members of our faith community who are requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. And our praying band continues to stir up the gift of the Spirit on Sunday mornings. Join us at 8.30 a.m. on Sundays via Zoom. Details are on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And our children's choir will rehearse each Sunday morning in October from 10 to 10.50 in the church's vestry. Our Institute of Christian Education Wednesday Night Bible Study returns in October. Minister Nadelka Prescott leads the virtual sessions titled Unsilenced for God. See Join in Details on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org for more information. We invite you to join us for Let Us Pray weekly conference call. This prayer line takes place each Thursday at 7 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. Join the Abyssinian prayer line to pray for God's continued grace in our lives. See Zoom and join in details on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And our Center for Care and Advocacy operates by phone and virtual appointments only, Thursdays from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. and Friday afternoon from 1 to 4 p.m. See appointment and additional contact information on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org. Visit abyssinian.org for updates on the work of our pulpit search committee. The 71st Men's Week of Services will take place at Abyssinian October the 2nd through October the 8th. This year we observe Men's Week with the theme standing on the shoulders of our great spiritual leaders. Featured speakers of the weeknight program include sons of our spiritual leaders in a panel discussion one Night Revival with guest preacher Reverend Raymond Rashad Moore, and we'll celebrate the 71st annual Men's Day on Sunday, October the 8th at 10 a.m. with keynote speaker Dr. Eddie Glaude of Princeton University.
Your generous contributions help support the mission of Abyssinia. And to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, we've switched our online giving platform to PushPay. You can text Abby to 77977 or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account using the number 917-710-7933. You can mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and for your generosity. Please continue to be in prayer for members of our faith community who are requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen. Our praying band continues to stir up the gift of the Spirit on Sunday mornings. Join us at 8.30 a.m. on Sundays via Zoom. Details are on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And our children's choir will rehearse each Sunday morning in October from 10 to 10.50 in the church's vestry. Our Institute of Christian Education Wednesday Night Bible Study returns in October. Minister Nadelka Prescott leads the virtual sessions titled Unsilenced for God. See join in details on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org for more information. We invite you to join us for Let Us Pray weekly conference call. This prayer line takes place each Thursday at 7 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. Join the Abyssinian prayer line to pray for God's continued grace in our lives. See Zoom and join in details on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And our Center for Care and Advocacy operates by phone and virtual appointments only, Thursdays from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. and Friday afternoon from 1 to 4 p.m. See appointment and additional contact information on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org. Visit abyssinian.org for updates on the work of our pulpit search committee. The 71st Men's Week of Services will take place at Abyssinian October the 2nd through October the 8th. This year we observe Men's Week with the theme standing on the shoulders of our great spiritual leaders. Featured speakers of the weeknight program include sons of our spiritual leaders in a panel discussion one Night Revival with guest preacher Reverend Raymond Rashad Moore and will celebrate the 71st annual Men's Day on Sunday, October the 8th at 10 a.m. with keynote speaker Dr. Eddie Glaude of Princeton University. Your generous contributions help support the mission of Abyssinia and to make giving easier, faster, and more secure, We've switched our online giving platform to PushPay. You can text Abby to 77977 or scan the QR code on your screen. You can also give by Zelle through your bank account using the number 917-710-7933. You can mail your contributions to the Abyssinian Baptist Church, 132 Odell Clark Place, New York, New York, 10030. We thank you for your gifts and for your generosity. Please continue to be in prayer for members of our faith community who are requesting prayer for themselves or for loved ones who are sick, shut in, or in bereavement. These names appear on the prayer list that you now see on your screen.
and our praying band continues to stir up the gift of the Spirit on Sunday mornings. Join us at 8.30 a.m. on Sundays via Zoom. Details are on your screen now and by visiting abyssinian.org. And our children's choir will rehearse each Sunday morning in October from 10 to 10.50 in the church's vestry. Our Institute of Christian Education Wednesday night Bible study returns in October. Minister Nadelka Prescott leads the virtual sessions titled Unsilenced for God. See join in details on your screen and by visiting abyssinian.org for more information. 